Dear colleagues, I like to present a case of an upper right second Biko speed, which uh, said they were easy to treat. The 15 years old boy came in with pain after initial root canal treatment in another office. The examination showed that the tooth didn't respond on cold, the percussion test was positive, the pocket depth were 2 to 3 millimeters, the mobility was zero, and we had an extended composite restoration. Visible signs of a chronic apical parentitis mesial of the second premolar and a conspicuous root anatomy. Two or more roots are more as likely, as you can see on the X-ray. So the diagnosis was quite clear. Status after initial root canal treatment, a chronic apical periodontitis, a probably missed anatomy, and a possible perforation. A treatment plan was made and we wanted to locate the perforation if it was there, locate an additional root canal, cleaning, shaping and disinfection, filling with warm vertical condensation technique. As you certainly know, Vertucci divided the teeth in eight different categories. And in this case, the tooth certainly represents the category 8, which is a premolar with three independent roots. The incidence is about 0.5% according to Vertici, as you can see in the chart. First of all, we remove the old temporary filling with an ultrasonic scaler. At the very first appointment we um, extended the excess cavity until right under the cusps to detect not only the palatal canal um, but also a buccal canal and to drain um, the tooth because the 15 years old boy had severe pain and we had to do very quickly some sort of uh, treatment to solve his problem. This is the second appointment. We irrigated with um, chlorhexidine because we are not sure if there was a perforation. You can see the two entrances of the buccal and palatal root canal, but if you remember the X-ray, there has to be an additional root canal system distally. And there it is. I can clearly feel it, see it. So, and I did another x-ray to verify the third canal. The previous dentist expected only one canal and found the palatal the buccal canals were very hard to explore because they were so narrow. To have a straight access, I had to remove overhanging dentine with ultrasonic. In this case, you can see here, I use the endosonor file and I use it very, very gentle to avoid unnecessary 
destroying of sound dentine. Copious irrigation to remove the debris. And then we can see what we have exposed with the endosonor file. Now you can clearly see the distal buccal canal, the mesiobuccal canal. In higher magnification you can see it even better. Here it is. Mesobuccal canal. As soon as I established a glide path with hand files um, 0.6, um, 0.8 and um, 0.10 hand files, K files, I used um, the profile files um, beginning with the 1502 on all canals, the palatal the distal buckle and the mesial buckle canal. And I started with a picking motion. Then I changed to a profile 2002. Also with picking motion as preparation for the pro taper sequence which followed. So here we can see the SX file. I use the SX file to enlarge the canal entrances. You also can use uh, the gates drills. With gates it goes a little bit faster, but I have more control with the SX file. Now I start the irrigation with sodium hypochlorite because I was pretty sure that there was no perforation so I can use the sodium hypochlorite irrigation very safely with no risk to overpress any material into the periapical area. I always flute the pulp chamber with sodium hypochlorite and here you can see the S1 file, a shaping file, the first shaping file which is used in a brushing motion. You brush with the file the outer curvature, very gentle, avoid to brush the inner curvature of the canal because this could lead to a strip perforation. You can see this picking motion, this picking brushing motion with the S1 file. Always brush with almost no pressure. Passive ultrasonic irrigation follows after every file and I recapitulated um, every time with a 10k file to have patency. After I completed the protaper sequence until the um, finishing file 2, which is the red one, I started gauging the apical third with hand files, in this case ISO 30 and ISO 35. I always try to gauge until at least until 30 or 35 to have a 
better cleaning and disinfection with the sodium hypochlorite and to have a better cone fit afterwards. Although I was ready with my pro taper sequence until the F2 finishing file and I had no resistance with it, you can see with the ISO 35 hand file I have still resistance and you can see some debris on uh, the, the tip of the file. the master point x-rays please note the first primula there is also a very difficult anatomy after I finished all the steps I dried the canals with uh, sterile paper points I like to use ethanol uh, as the last irrigation um, because I can dry the canals very easy, very fast and I'm sure they are completely dry. After that I loaded the gutta packer point with a sealer I use a H plus. I pump the gutta packer point up and down a little bit so I'm sure that I have moisted the canal walls also with the sealer. So here comes my elements unit with the heat plugger that cuts off the Gutterberger cone in the upper part. If you have a bad cone fit, then you will pull out the whole Gutterberger cone uh, with the heat plugger um, because there is no resistance on the root tip. And this is important. Don't tap the Gutterberger. Push it and hold it for five seconds, but don't tap. The heat plugger is about 230 uh, degrees Celsius or 446 Fahrenheit. You have to bring the plugger with heat into the gutta percha, hold it uh, some seconds, then engage it for one second and pull it out. And again, you have to push it and hold it for five seconds and don't tap. You have to repeat this procedure um, until you are about three, four or five millimeters before the root tip. And then you can start the backfill. I usually moisten the canal walls again with a little amount of sealer and then start the backfill with the elements um, unit from Cybern Endo. You also can uh, use Optura or whatever you have. And remember, down tap, push and hold. So, here we are ready. All three canals are filled. And now we are ready to go to the resin filling. I usually use ethanol for cleaning uh, the pulp chamber. Also I use a micro brush to clean the pulp chamber from the sealer remnants. That works very well in my hands. Some of you will use another technique. 
I've heard from from um, quite a lot of people they are sunblasting the pulp chamber. So that's an alternative. After I have cleaned the pulp chamber, uh, we have to etch it. I still use Syntax Classic with Primer Adhesive Bond, a three bottle system. It's an old system, but it works still. It works very, very well. So I see no reason to change it. I like to use the capillary tips from Ultradent because you can reach the deeper areas of the pulp cavity very easily. And we have a very good seal of the canal entrances. So, here we are. The filling is ready. So let me just summarize a few things. Uh, upper second premolars are not so easy to treat as you could see. They can have three roots, two roots, one root, but always extend the excess cavity so you can see with what kind of premolar you deal with. Thank you for your attention and goodbye.